Carlos Real Networks. Miss Terry. Uh, how do I pronounce the last name? I don't want to mess it up because it's Malik. Malik. It sounds very Asian. It's actually, um, well, my husband's Polish, mm. but the name in their family came from, it is from the Middle East. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's yes. a Middle Eastern name. It was M A L I C K or M A L E K. This is how you pronounce it, Malik. Yes. Malik. I'm like, why well, you having that swag on that name, man? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's somehow it got into Poland, mm. and my husband's family is Polish, mm. so. Okay. So very, very in Middle Poland, Eastern. they say Malik, but that is, yeah. I have a friend whose name is Fahad Malik. Okay. Well, when I first got married to him, people would call me all the time. I need to talk to Terry Malik or Malik. I yeah, Malik. And I was yes. like, I, so I had to research the name and figure out, why are these people calling me this? This isn't how you say it. So. Okay, so yeah. we need to address exactly what happened live. Okay. Interestingly. Uh, um, it, uh, okay, so I got some clarity when I stepped away, and I... This is a big part of what I do and what I teach and what I help people with. And, you know, one of the biggest things in my journey is I am trying to put myself out there, the real me, and not say, hey, I'm some, I don't prescribe to what people call, what, what I call the guru complex. I don't think, you know, I, I think we're all in this journey together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's funny that yeah. you bring it up, the guru complex. Yeah, because I'm not saying there aren't amazing teachers out there and, and what people call gurus, I'm not belittling that at all. But I personally don't adopt that for myself. I don't say, well, the more I learn, the more I become like a guru. I just look at it like we're all here to teach and learn from each other. So having said that, um, what happened is I was not conscious of it, but with what we were talking about, we're talking about these unconscious beliefs, and I couldn't even get it out when one of my unconscious beliefs was coming forward and it came into what I call my subconscious, which is when it's in the subconscious, we might not be aware of it, but we can treat, we can retrieve it mm -hmm. and eventually pull, pull it, it into the consciousness. So I have in my subconsciousness and consciousness now some things from my past that create fear in me, mm -hmm. some experiences and so forth. So what happened is in talking about those very things, those un, those deep beliefs that are not always conscious to us, mm. mine came forward. And I, again, I wasn't conscious of it, and it shifted my energy, and I attracted in a lower vibrational energy. That's how I that's see nice. it. That's how, yes. And that's how I see it. That's how I believe it. That's how I teach it. It's, it just really, it just goes to show you the power of thought in the mind. Now, once I realized what was going on and that there was a force outside of me that was bothering me, I can't, I can't just work on getting that off. I have to also work on shifting my, my energy back. I have to work on shifting my thoughts back to um, a higher vibrational frequency rather than being in this place of fear. But, you know, no matter how much work we do, we are human and we do still have fears. Always. And so it's working, it's managing those. That, that's the way I like to look at it with energy. It's trying to learn to manage those and not suppress them and be afraid of them. It has to flow through you. It has to get off. It ha yes. I have to, I can't just keep it in there and ignore it. I could have just kept trying to go through and go through, but it probably would have gotten worse. Mm -hmm. I had to do some work to release that. I had somebody outside of me that's an energy healer also mm -hmm. try to do a clearing from a distance. Mm -hmm. I went out and, you know, I did the things I needed to do to get grounded. Mm -hmm. I went outside, um, got some sunshine. Got some uh, did some essential oils. I love mm -hmm. love essential oils. I did what I needed to do to try to bring me up to to a higher frequency. Might not be as high as I was earlier today, but I feel much better. Yeah, because when I came in, in uh, earlier today, mm -hmm. boom! I saw you. We, yeah. You know, you cast up on that energy. I was mm -hmm. already hyper, which I usually am. Yeah. And then we we had that yeah. amazing conversation at the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. We came over here, and then you started. You know. I, I, I'll watch the whole process so that mm -hmm. I can describe it in a much better way. Now, understanding that part, if that is even true, I'm guessing yes. Everybody has fears, right? Mm -hmm. What can I do right now if I, because I don't know, all the subconscious, unconscious things, I have no, I have no clue about. I'm learning it from you right now. And I decide, hey, I don't want no negativity from the past. I want to go forward full, fully like a train. And these things are like a blockage. 
What do I start? W where do I start as a the, newcomer? One of the hardest things to come into accept, and again, in the way that it works for me and with the universal laws and so forth, is it, it's a to me it can be a very difficult first step because it's not just saying I just want to get rid of it and be done and move on, which I spent almost my whole life trying to do, you know, just forget about it and put it in the past. What I had to, to come to learn and experience is to flow with it. Always flow with the energy. So if energy comes in and it is, it drops my vibration and it creates fear, I need to allow that to flow through me rather than to fight it. Okay. If I fight it and suppress it, I'm going to attract more of it, like we talked about. Okay, so it, does that mean that if, for example, I remember something from the past, very negative, and you know, I, I start feeling that usual uncomfortableness from mm -hmm. how I felt at that time. Yes. Should I just accept it, like breathe in, okay, I'm in this vibration now, it's all right, Un unfortunate things happened, mm -hmm. and what do I do from there, where do I go? A yes to all of that, because in accepting it, the more we accept it, the less we're going to have a judgment on it. Unless we're going to say, you know, if we if we can learn to stop, if we can train ourselves and stop saying, that was so bad, that was so bad, that was so bad, I don't want to go there again. It's it's natural for us to feel that way. So rather than trying to do that, just say, okay, that happened. Like you said, it's unfortunate, you know. That happened, created some unfortunate... Um, circumstances. For circumstances on my life and some un unfortunate stress, some, you know, whatever. Um... It's what I talked about with the body. It's the etheric body that has that imprint. And, we, you know, we can't get rid of it. We can't make it go away. It's there. But we can just recognize it for what it is and accept it, like you said, and then say, okay, this is where I am. But rather than staying there, we can do the work to bring our energy back up in our spot. But we first have to recognize it for some reason. It's not People, for some reason. It's that whole universal law. Go ahead. <laughs> for some, it, this is from personal experiences. Uh, personal experiences. Like, because usually people try to like ignore it, yes. push it on the side, oh, this yes. doesn't exist, this is not real. Yes. Is that bad? It is bad, because okay. we're going to attract more of that. Ooh, I've been doing that for like, we all, that's what I was supposed yes. to do, I thought. We all have, because that's the whole thing. When you read about the law of attraction and the secret, they just tell you, just change your thoughts, just change your thoughts. Well, yes, that is the ultimate That is one goal. of them. One, you one do of them. want to change your thoughts. Because if you stay in this place of, that was so bad, and oh, this is how I felt, and I feel that way again. If we stay in that place, we're not helping ourselves at all, and we're not growing, and we're not moving on. However, there's a difference between fighting it and accepting it, and then letting it go. So we have to accept it. Accept it first. Accept it. Okay, you know, that happened. And look, this is, okay, we talked about gratitude earlier. When we can come to a place of accepting it and actually being grateful for the lessons we learned from it, then we can move on. That's how I see it. If I fight it and I just judge it, it's so bad, and oh, I can't believe somebody did that to me, or whatever the situation yeah. is, um, I'm going to keep, it's going to keep coming it's back. Gonna, it's going to keep coming back. Yeah. The only way you can just completely be attached from it is, that happened, I learned a lot from that. Yes. This is what, I'm, my life is supposed to be here because of what happened. Yes, because the more we do that, we just it doesn't it doesn't seem to have that that heaviness that of, power over us that power over us it takes it takes that freedom away when we have that negative judgment on it it takes that freedom away from us it absolutely takes our freedom away our we you know our freedom of choice is very very powerful we can choose to accept it and allow us to learn what we learned from it and move on. Because that gives us more power, more freedom, more strength. Or we can choose to stay in that place and live the rest of our life attracting more of that. You know? It's kind of what I call the, I used to call it, I haven't used this word in a while, but I used to call it the victim mentality. Oh, yes. If we are in that victim mentality of, oh, I was a victim, we're going to me. continue to be a victim. If we're in that mentality of, okay, that happened. But look where I am now. Look where it brought me. Look what I learned, and I'm so grateful. And I just see when you, I mean, oh my gosh, your energy, when you walk into a space, you have so much gratitude. Do I? Yes. 
and com and you know you're greeted with hi how are you today how's your day and you have so much enthusiasm it's real it's, it's real and people can feel it it's not fake. and if you're not in a place of gratitude about your life you can't express that genuinely yes it can't be real yeah and people are people can feel you know if it's real or not yes. anybody, anybody, anybody can feel it yes. you, it shows up in your smile it shows yeah. up in your body language you it's somehow eyes. you can yeah. tell that no, this whole smiling thing is not real. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. I and, and again, anyone who understands or feels or reads energy at all, I mean, we all do it. It's just not everybody understands it or knows what they're doing. But when you do that, you you can immediately pick up in others what's genuine and what's not. You know, when you're in tune with that. And yeah, you, in fact, it's it's interesting observing yeah. you. You know, because you're. You just go into so much enthusiasm, and, and I know you know this because of because you do it. Whoever you're talking to, their vibration immediately lifts. And they immediately are like, oh, you know, you say, how are you today? And maybe in their mind, they were thinking, this day is horrible. I just want to get off work. I don't want to be here. They, they're, they're like, oh, well, that's pre I'm pretty good. How are you? You know, And you strike up a conversation, and that's lifting their energy. That's, that's powerful. And we can do that with ourselves too. I will say, sometimes it's so much harder with ourselves than with other people. Because <laughs> we, we've got our own inner dialogue going on here. You it know? is true. Yeah. I'm like a master of striking things and making people push people. And then when it comes to myself, I'm like, oh, five minutes later, I'll, um, I'll, I'll push myself again. Yeah. Okay, so let's go a little bit on the circumstances that put you in this place. The the the, the uh, confessions of, of of the of the negativities, mm -hmm. the big big uh, the big end that nobody wants to talk about. Nobody wants to come clean of you know the past. What happened to you? What did yeah. you go through? For all that to put together to bring Miss Terry Malley 2016 with her journey to free Denison, bring spirituality to Texas. And, and you know, push like a consciousness to the next level. All this energy that you're talking about, nothing can stop you because probably you're supposed to be here. Yeah. What happened that put you in this? Like, how did you become this person? Did you go through a, like tough times? Mm -hmm. uh, no, it's it's a very good question. I want to put it. I want to say something that somebody asked me a few years ago that kind of caught me off guard. Mm -hmm. They said, "So when did you start your spiritual path?" And I was like, well, I've been doing it my whole life. And they said, no, you don't understand. I mean, like, what was your big turning point? And I said, I can honestly say, and there's many, but I can honestly say it wasn't one big thing. It, it never was. It was always a journey I was on, but, but several very distinct experiences, you know, created the, a stronger shift, if you will. Um, Start from the beginning. So, um, gosh, <laughs> I feel like I've lived a lot of life. <laughs> no. Um, you know how some people think, okay, like I just was is, is this, is, this are, 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 is that question bringing you out of your comfort zone? It is, but that's because good. Because that's growth. That's good. That's growth. Yes, and that's why I bring people into this room. Yes, that's what we're this is, that is growth. So, so we're doing so right see, now what you've been talking about. Yeah, you're switching, you're switching roles here with yes. me, which is, which is good, and that's what it's about, and that's what I tell everybody. In fact, I share, um, every once in a while, I share personal experiences with clients that will help them see that. You know, I didn't just wake up one morning with all this knowledge and awareness and peace and energy understanding, you know, it's, 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 been a, it's been a journey, but um, I grew up in a, uh, in a wonderful family, wonderful, wonderful family, but in a very different, um, like I said earlier, you know, I was just, I was kind of in my own little world, I was in a very different world because they had, uh, they were a very um, very Conserv religious, conservative, religious yes. family. The, you know, yes. I, I, I can see you're yes. struggling to put yes. it into words. It is a struggle. It is I a struggle. will help you. Okay. It is a struggle, and I appreciate that. And the reason it's a struggle, because where I've come to learn, is that used to, I judged that really harshly. I was angry about that. I blamed it on these people and these people and these people. But what I came to understand, you know, I would blame it on my parents. I'd blame it on my church. I'd blame it on what I come to realize is, 
there's no blame to be placed. That was their journey. That was their journey. That they their were at journey. that time on that. Yes. That was right at that time. And it feels amazing to come to that place, to, okay, be, yeah. uh, to be able to Makes say that. Sense. But having said that, it doesn't mean I didn't go through a lot of pain and times of difficulty and spiritual growth. And, and attract other negative situations because of where I was in my own judgment and anger. And so, um, so that, that was my upbringing. So when I got out uh, on my own, you know, I got ready to go to college, I just became just, I wanted to be the biggest rebel I could be. You know, I just want to be a rebel. You know, I, I just, I'm tired of this conservative life. It's not me. It doesn't fit me. I'm just going to be a rebel. Now, in hindsight, <laughs> what most people would call me a rebel, it's not that bad. Okay, this is, this is an exotic picture that is in my head. Okay. Uh, uh, Perry Malik, the spiritual rebel. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, the spiritual rebel. There you go. That's great. Okay, so. Okay, but let's but yeah, and so, you know, so it wasn't like maybe as extreme as some people would say, you know, and I, I was, you know, really rebelled. And I, so, but compared to where I had been, it was quite rebellious. And, and, you know, I went through several years of trying the heavy partying and, and just all that. But really what I was trying to do, and I and in hindsight, and I look back, when I was in college, I was really learning who I truly was. It was the first time to be on my own and find out who am I really. Who is this person really? So what's ironic, and what's not, it's not ironic, it's, it's a, but what's interesting is to see all the things I was drawn to then, in 2012, or well before then, but really strongly at the end of 2012, first of 2013, is when that all started getting really, really strong. And again, and it was the same person that I was back then. I started realizing all this stuff that was intriguing me, you know, all the, all the, the hippie lifestyle and all about free spirit and peace and love and, and you know, all these things attracted me. All these different, all these different spiritual practices and theories and religions and all of that and taking pieces of all that. I started seeing that in college that this is who I really am. You know, I don't fit into this box over here. I don't fit into any box. I have to create my own box. I have to create my own world. Maybe, maybe not a box, maybe a table. A box is not a like, good, yeah, yeah it's like not a, a box. <laughs> like a table like where I can jump off. And, yes. I mean, well. And, and, well, in fact, I love the kind of an analogy used in, in, in Buddhism. It's, it's almost like a basket. You know, what what's not working can filter through, and what needs to stay in can contain itself type thing. You know, it really, I really had to kind of learn that. Well, then I got into, got my degree, got into corporate, became really, really, really aggressive in corporate. I, um, Which, so are you, were, you, were you working in a bank or? I, no, I was, um, I worked in telecommunications and, well, before that I worked in insurance and then telecommunications and well, just different types of corporate jobs. Corporate America. Yes, corporate Suit America. Suit up, nice yes, car, yes. working in an office. And so I was always... You know, that was my drive. That was my drive. And other people were having families, and I was just drive, 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 you know. And, and uh, but I was, it just, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really fulfilling me. So, well, anyway, that's a little bit. But along my journey, when I was, I was talking about to kind of go back into the college days. Um, so, so growing up, I had some health issues, and that created me to go within a lot. Um, I wore a back brace a big part of my adolescence and I used to be really outgoing and got along with everybody and all that and suddenly I was just in a shell. I just overnight, I didn't want to be seen, I wanted to be invisible. So I spent many years doing everything I could to be invisible. And so when I went, you know, I got the brace off, I went to college, and I talked about the rebel stuff, that was basically me coming out of my shell. Okay, I'm tired of being squished down and being in the shell and I'm I did have an experience, uh, besides my health issues, I did have an experience where I was attacked, physically attacked. 